hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to be looking at something i think um that is one of the common questions especially in biochemistry so today we are going to be looking at errors in measurement focusing on gross systematic and random errors okay so before we continue my name is dr emmanuel obodo i'm a biomedical scientist and i'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the united kingdom so let's get into it first of all i want us to know that when we talk about measurement is a vital aspect in pathology laboratory irrespective of any techniques or any aspect of the pathology laboratory whether it is in biochemistry hematology immunology in every aspect of pathology laboratory we undergo measurement we use measurement as a technique and what happened is that this measurement in which we we use as a technique to determine a value of um what is we are analyzing or the sample we are analyzing or whatever thing that we want to determine plays a vital role remember that when we do analysis when we process biological samples it can comes the result can come out in terms of maybe a color, a coloration, which can appear as a line, or it can appear in terms of numbers, okay, maybe which could indicate the strength of the reaction, maybe it can say plus one or plus two or plus three. Sometimes you can even get a value in terms of maybe 20, 30, 40, 100, 500, 1000, as the case may be. Remember that these values that we are getting, they are not just values as per values. They show a lot of things. They mean something. And what they mean, the implication of those values could either support in the effective management of patient diagnosis or could lead in missed um, patient diagnosis or even mismanagement of the uh, patient condition. And because of that, when, we, when it comes to measurement, which is actually the vital and the center aspect of pathology laboratory, you know, as we carry out our duty as a biomedical scientist, we employ this method of measurement. So what it means is that it is important that we get ourselves, you know, um, used to these common factors that are likely to, you know, result in the possibility of this measurement giving us a wrong result or giving us a false result. So that is why measurement is important. And can I also add here that that is why in quality management system, these measurement errors are employed to make sure that that errors can be limited where possible or at least make sure that it does not have a negative impact on the patient diagnosis and management so let's get into this you know properly we need to know that measurement you know um errors it has to do with values that is outside the true value or original value of that thing you are measuring okay so this can occur during analytical process which can be either known as analytical or experimental errors so what it means that if if a certain um substances or a biological sample has a certain value if you do measurement if you carry out analysis and the result you are getting is outside the original value or the true value of that very sample you know as a regard to the patient condition that is then called measurement error so once you measure something and the result you are getting is away from the true value of the patient result of true value that ref that reflects the patient condition that is known as measurement error so once again measurement error or cause when a values obtained differ from the original or true value of that very um, substances or biological sample you are analyzing. So we are quickly going to look at types of measurement errors. So sometimes you can see a number of factors, but anyway, there are three main common factors that could affect uh, measurement in pathology laboratory. In fact, in some cases, people consider it to just be these two because depending on how you look at it, this gross error anyway can be seen in both systematic and random error. But I chose to put the gross error there as well. So there are three main types of uh, measurement errors which include gross error, okay, systematic error, and random errors, okay? So we are going to look at this in more details. But before we actually look at into these types of errors what exactly does it really mean i really think i really thought i should um explain this a little bit further to help us to understand 
because I had mentioned something in my previous video about um, accuracy and precision. So if you've not watched my video on accuracy and precision, I would recommend that you should go and watch it. So let's look at this, you know, I want you to see this as a measurement, you know, uh, value. So what you want, you want your result to be at the center. Remember when you plot your graph, okay? Let me see if I can actually, um, see if I can draw something, okay? Remember that when you plot your graph, and in that graph, you have this place as a mean. Sorry, don't mind my drawing, okay? You have this place as a mean, okay? And the mean goes like this. So when you run your quality control, remember that this side could be maybe something like, maybe you can have maybe, um, you could have something like minus one, okay? You could have minus one, you could have uh, minus two, okay? And it goes on, you know, down the line. Does that make sense? Then here you can have something like maybe um, plus one, okay? And sorry, don't mind my drawing, please. Then you can have here, you can have a uh, plus two, okay? Remember the Levagenes graph, if you can remember. I just want to use quality control to explain this. So don't mind my drawing. So if you look at this, so when you run your QC, okay? And sometimes you can get the QC to be at the middle. That means it's exactly at the mean. That is as accurate as it can be, okay? But sometimes you can run it, okay? It might be towards the negative sign. Sometimes it might go towards the negative sign, sorry, positive sign. It could be at the negative sign sometimes. It could be at the positive sign sometimes. And that is why when you now take the trend, you can see something like this, okay? The trend can go like this, as the case may be. Then you can now call it QC trending. Now, the point why I mentioned this is that I'm trying to say that if i'm to um explain this so i'm trying to say that this is the mean okay which is actually the center so the result you are getting at the mean here is actually at the center here where there is no error okay where there is no any different where the result obtained is very close to the true value of that very substance okay so that is the middle here does that make sense so once you analyze something and is at the middle as you can see here irrespective of how many times you run that sample is very close you know to the middle which is which is a reflection of what is obtainable about the sample or what is obtainable regarding the patient condition that is no error and that means that there is accuracy there is precision accuracy because the result is very close to what is expected of that very patient samples and of course the replication is also close to each other so that means there is no error but there are some conditions where you can see like in, like what i explained here sometimes the qc goes towards the negative sometimes it goes towards the positive basically it's a little bit far from the mean and that could be associated with you know errors as the case may be i just want to use that to explain this although you know there can be slightly different but that's what i'm trying to say remember when you open the qc via new it is still very viable as you continue to use that qc it will start losing its potency and that, that could lead to random that could lead to a number of errors okay so that is what i'm trying to explain here that when we now run this qc deteriorate it bring it to the room temperature put it back in the fridge and all of that that sample can be affected it could lead to sample instability and that is why sometimes your qc can be at the middle that is at the mean it can tend towards the negative it can tend towards the positive so you can mimic that to be types of errors i hope that makes sense okay so now let's look at the random error a random error you can see even though the result is at the center here okay at the middle but you can see it's far from the the center middle okay the center point and because it's far from the center point that that could also mimic error but anyway don't forget that it's at the middle layer anyway at the center uh inner layer anyway but look at the replicate the replicates are far from each other so because the replicates are far from each other that is why you can say in random error you can see precision will be affected because precision talks about um replicate how far are they they are or how close they are to each other so precision talks about how far or close replicates of a measurement are to each other so you can see precision is affected but accuracy is not affected because somehow it is still at the center does that make sense okay but then when you come to the systematic error you will see it's not even at the center at all so what it means that the accuracy has been affected okay because accuracy talks about the result you get how close it is to the true value of that very substance you are measuring or that or that uh, measurement okay 
or the true value of the measurement of what you are analyzing okay so that's why you can see accuracy is affected but precision is not affected why because even though it is far from where it's supposed to be the replicates are very close to each other so that is just the way i try to kind of explain um these um types of error or maybe what i mean in terms of error so once again once you get a result that is far that is far from the true value of you know um what you are measuring that then is known as error okay now let's quickly look at what is gross error because i have given you this uh, information quickly so with a gross error we see gross error as a human error which could be due to an oversight so that is why i say gross error you know they can be typically caused by what sudden changes in prevailing physical circumstances Physical circumstances mean that maybe imagine that someone is very busy in the lab and because of that busy nature of the lab and the person, of course, being multitasking and all of that. And due to that, that a, you know, situation of that very environment, the person made a mistake, which could be due to an oversight. OK, or maybe the way the person, you know, uh, somehow misinterpreted it as the case may be that can then lead to that error that error is not because of there is something wrong with the system as per um the analyzer or the reagent or as the case may be it's just based on the operator making a mistake based on the human error based on the oversight so some type of errors are known as gross error that is why like i've said there the key aspect of it that gross error you know can be due to a systematic fault or by operators okay so what it means is that the system the environment you know you know they're contributing to the uh, why the operators you know is making a mistake for example like the human error as a result of what oversight okay which can lead to that mistake now the example of this very uh, gross error could include reading and recording mistakes so someone have read something wrongly or recorded that, that thing wrongly due to the busy schedule of that very environment that could then contribute to that but whichever way you look at it gross error you know is a human error or operator errors which could be due to what oversight mistake okay the example is reading and recording errors now let's look at systematic error now if we come back here again you can see that with the systematic error don't forget what we said we said that the precision is not affected but the accuracy is affected so the accuracy is this center you are seeing here this center point you are seeing here this is a true value of this very of the patient result but when the patient result is a way very far from the true value that difference you are getting is known as systematic error okay does that make sense so you can see even though that the replicate are close to each other but you can see it's far from the center so anyway that is known as what well, systematic error so that is why i said a systematic error systematic error is a measurement system that makes the same kind of mistake every time it measures something so irrespective of how many times it measures a particular thing the same kind of mistake will always going to be made now let me explain this further so if you look at the key the key here is that it always affects the same number of measurements provided that a reading is taken the same way each time what do i mean by this what i'm trying to say that in a case of systematic error if what is affected is maybe um plus five okay or minus five as the case may be in a spell how many times you measure that thing you are always going to get the difference still in that plus five or minus five now let me explain what i mean this way if a true value is supposed to be 40 and the mistake the systematic error occurring could be maybe giving it 45. So what is that? In of how many times you measure the thing, you are always going to get something like 45, 45 point something as you can mean it will always go to add that very fast. If it's on the negative side, you might be getting something like instead of 40, you can get 35 as the case may be, meaning it will still go to affect the same number of measurements in of how many times you do that very test or measure that thing. And that is why it can give you, you know, too high or too low. But interestingly, with systematic error, we can actually identify the source. All we need to do is to go back to the uh, method or the procedure or what we think that could lead to that. And then it can now help us to be able to find out what is likely the cause, which I will show you as we progress. Anyway, but like I've said, it can affect uh, accuracy. Okay. 
Now, let's look at types of systematic error because this will now help us to see why it can affect a certain number of, um, you know, uh, measurement, irrespective of how many times we measure it, okay? For example, the type of systematic error could be environmental error, observational error. See, now that observational has come again, which is why in most cases, people don't really consider gross error because it's a form of observational error. It's a human mistake error. Anyway, observational error, instrument error, and theoretical error. So what does that mean by environment? If it is based on laboratory environment, it could be change in temperature in the laboratory environment. You know, it could be maybe um, maybe some error source in the environment, as the case may be. Anything that affects the environment, if the errors is contributed by the environment, that is then known as environmental associated type of systematic error. And of course, if it is due to observational, meaning incorrect observation, that is seen as observational associated systematic error and of course if it means that the equipment has not been calibrated or has not been properly maintained and now is giving a wrong result that is then known as instrument associated systematic error and again if it is theoretical it means that the experiment procedure or, or you know has to do with maybe someone assuming or someone ignoring the the procedure as a case maybe the assumption in that experimental procedure you know uh, which is not theoretical uh, based on the theoretical um, knowledge or as the case may be so whereby the person you know somehow try to overrule a certain experimental method due to the person's assumption okay that is called theoretical associated systematic error now see the example the example means uncalibrated or improper calibration equipment now uncalibration means the equipment has not been calibrated properly okay or maybe it has been calibrated but the the what has been imported as a calibration curve is not appropriate with the current batch number or as the case may be i think i'm going to talk to us about calibration in future but for now that is what it means because calibration actually if you understand what it means every measurement that goes on in analyzer is running based on the calibration curve meaning the analyzer is unable to measure anything that is outside the calibration curve i will explain that in my subsequent in my next in my subsequent videos okay but anyway so once equipment has not been calibrated you know undergoes improper calibration that can lead to systematic error and sometimes it can also be associated with you know maybe you've not done a proper maintenance on that equipment that could also lead to um uh, systematic error of course if the reagent has deteriorated or sample is instability instability of the sample can lead to a systematic error what does this thing mean it means that irrespective of how irrespective of how good a biomedical scientist is irrespective of how intelligent how very careful how detailed you can be in running um, laboratory samples if your reagent has deteriorated if the samples are not stable okay if the equipment has not been properly calibrated it doesn't matter how good you are you are likely to get a wrong result and that result is known as what systematic error okay so that is why i say it can be identifiable okay meaning that if you retrace your step back you could find that it's because that equipment has not been calibrated or it has not been properly calibrated or the reagent has deteriorated or the sample is not stable so once you've noticed that you can then correct this example like i've said here and subsequently you start um, getting accurate results meaning you've now eliminated systematic error okay now let us look at random error a random error what happened remember what i told you it, it affects mainly precision, not the accuracy. So you can see, if you notice what I showed you previously, you can see the results supposed to be here. You can see some of them are close, as the case may be. But again, if you look at the replicate, they are far from each other. So because the replicates are far from each other, it means that it affects the precision, not accuracy. Anyway, so if you've not watched my video, like I've said previously, on the accuracy and precision, just go and watch it. Now, let's look at what random error means. It means that this error occurs due to chance. You see it now? It's due to chance, and it means that even if everything is done correctly for each measurement, slightly different results will be obtained. Meaning, in a of how strict you have followed the standard operating procedure, irrespective of how well the equipment is working the reagent everything is okay okay the samples are okay irrespective of how correct the procedures are there's a possibility there's a chance okay that there can be a slightly different in the results you obtain that's slightly different in the results you obtain even though everything is working very well is called random error that is why we call it you know um error that occurs due to chance i hope 
that makes sense. So that's why it does not affect the accuracy of the result, meaning the result may not be far from the true value of the patient result. However, the replicates will be far from each other. So that is why we call it random error. It occurs by chance. Now, let's look at the key aspect of this definition. I'm putting the word keys so that it can help you to understand quickly what I'm trying to say here. So in random errors, it causes one measurement to differ slightly from the next. So what it means that when you measure this, you get this. When you measure it again, it can give you this. When you measure it again, it can give you that. So the measurement continue to differ from each other. So it will cause one measurement to differ slightly from the next measurement. So that slightly differences from when you measure sample and measure sample again, that differences in between them is known as random error. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what it means that it is unpredictable change. Okay. It's not something we plan. It can just happen. That's why it's a random error. It's occurred by chance. There can be a lot of anything that can affect it. It doesn't mean that something is wrong with the reagent or the equipment or as the case may be. It could just be, you know, a, it's just a chance that leads to that slightly different between the uh, measurement of the samples. So that is why it's unpredictable. Now, it's varying the result. Of course, the result can be either too high different or too low different to the next moment. So meaning when you measure the thing now and measure it again, there can be a too high or too low different between the current result and the previous result. Like I said again, it affects precision, not accuracy. It does not affect the accuracy of the result. However, it affects the precision. Does that make sense? Now, let's look at types of random error. In terms of random error, you have environmental error, you have observational error. Now, I keep saying, you can see the observational have also come again. This is why in most cases, people are not paying attention, like I've said, uh, about gross error, because gross error is mostly, in most cases, significantly about observational error. That means human error. Anyway, so if there is any environmental condition, like I've mentioned previously, or observational condition, like I've mentioned previously, that, you know, lead to that slight changes, slight differences, of the uh, measurement okay that is now called uh, environmental or um, observational associated type of random error and the example can be mislabeling a sample is it now so mislabeling sample can give you a result that is not consistent with the patient not because there is something wrong with the protocol but because there has been a mistake in terms of mislabeling the sample. A sample for patient A has been labeled for patient B and for patient B for patient A. In as well how good you are as a biomedical scientist, you cannot get that A patient result. You cannot get that a B patient result. The result is definitely going to be different. So that is where mislabeling samples comes in. Of course, pipetting error comes in. So pipetting means that it has to not do with that, you know, um, that chance of maybe the likely mistake you can make when you do the pipetting. You can be a good scientist that knows had to be pattern but because you are preparing that error there's a possibility of the little bubbles as the case may be that little bubbles or missing 0 0.000000 microliter different okay could not lead to that random error and that is where preparing error comes in of course improper mixing of the sample or reagent so imagine you want to run a sample you need to homogeneously mix that sample but because you're in a hurry you didn't mix it very well okay that can affect the result. It has nothing to do with the uh, techniques. It has nothing to do with the procedure. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the reagent or the analyzer. It has everything to do with that, you know, that sample not properly mixed or the reagent not properly mixed. I hope that makes sense. Now, another thing is whereby there's a, a power shortage, which is voltage fluctuation. So if the voltage continues to fluctuate, that difference, that fluctuation of the power can actually impact on the result you are going to get again that is known as random error meaning it occurs by chance it's not something that happens all the time okay now temperature fluctuation again environmental temperature fluctuation or as the case may be so that you know that sudden change in the temperature could actually affect the result you are going to get okay yeah that is what you get thank you very much for listening hopefully you've been able to understand what measurement errors are the type of measurement error the um, um gross error systematic error and the random error and i've also given you the example hopefully that makes sense please can i ask you to subscribe share like and comment and thank you very much till i come back away again all the best bye bye